Hey, what's going on everybody? Today's reaction is gonna be on Vagar, the tiny master of evil. If this is your first time here for one of my reactions, we're gonna take a look at the biography and story first. We'll move on to his gameplay, then we'll take a look at any cinematics Vagar might have, take a look at the skins, and then finally end off with the voice lines and special interactions. So Vagar, I don't know uh, anything, honestly, about Vagar. I, I mean, he's a Yordle, that's it. He's obviously the tiny master of evil, so he must be an evil Yordle, and that's honestly all I know. So let's go ahead and dive into him. All right, the quote we have is, you deny the darkness in your soul. Ooh, I want to hear his voice, and I like, I want to hear that voice line actually now. Roll is mage. I guess I did know that because I, I've probably used him in TFT. Region, Bandle City, makes sense. And then our related champions are Mordekaiser and LeBlanc. Okay, those are definitely some evildoers that you can be related to. No, um... No Yordle related champions in this little left side panel here. That's very interesting. An enthusiastic Yordle sorcerer, Vagar has embraced powers that few others dare even approach. As a free spirited inhabitant of Bandle City, he once longed to learn more of the celestial magic practiced by mortals, but his natural curiosity has or was twisted by imprisonment in the immortal bastion. Oh, now a stubborn creature with dark with the dark fury of the stars at his command, Vagar is often underestimated by others, and though he believes himself truly evil. There are some who still question his deeper motivations. Oh, though he believes himself truly evil, there are some who still question. Interesting. So wait a minute. We, okay. His natural curiosity was twisted by imprisonment in the immortal bastion. So he was uh, imprisoned in that? That's crazy. Okay, there's already a lot of like moving uh, things going on with his character. Like, is he truly evil? The immortal bastion part. Let's go ahead and find out here more about him. For most of the peoples of Runeterra, Yordles are not typically something to be feared. Their fabled home of Vandal City is said to be a mysterious spiritual place filled with odd trinkets and keepsakes gathered from across the material realm. While these curious creatures often leave to dwell among mortal races for a time, they generally return with fresh tales and new experiences to recount. Yet sadly, there are also those Yordles who lose their way. Among them is the sorcerer Vagar. After the Great Darken War left the world in ruin many centuries ago, the only light that seemed to shine on Valoran came from the skies above. Scattered survivors looked to the heavens, and the renewed study of ancient celestial magic piqued Vagar's interest. Imagining himself already a master of these mystical arts, the Yordle joined an order of mages in the Noxide territories, hoping to learn more of their craft. They did not think to question this eager newcomer, and he taught them to draw hope from the patterns created by the movements of the stars. Okay, so Vagar is very interested in the celestial magic, and he just wanted to study it. So he's like, all right, I got to leave Bandle City. We got to go into the Noxide territory and, and learn about it. But while many toiled to rebuild the world, others sought to conquer it. The brutal warlord Mordekaiser and his army swept across the lands, crushing and enslaving any who would oppose his rule. And the mages of the order, unskilled in war, were of little value to this tyrant. Looming over them in his accursed battle plate, his keen eye fell upon Vagar, and Mordekaiser recognized the Yordle for what he truly was. He snatched him up in one iron gauntlet and dragged his prize away as the other mages were put to the sword. What? He just, he just like, oh, I'm just gonna pick you up and take you with me. <laughs> Imprisoned in the heart of the warlord's new monolithic fortress, Vagar was forced to turn his magic to darker purposes. Okay, so initially he wasn't even gonna be a dark mage. He just wanted to learn about celestial magic, but then he's like recruited by Mordekaiser, right? Knowing that Yordles were craftier than any of the mortal races, Mordekaiser found Vagar to the physical plane, preventing him even from escaping to Bandle City. Okay, so he basically became imprisoned by Mordekaiser. He was not the only captive in that hellish place, but such isolation was the worst and most cruel form of torture for a Yordle. Vagar performed grisly enchantments against his will, some strengthening his master's dominion, others simply evoking terror for terror's sake. Wow, he, yeah, he ended up having to, he was being forced to do evil, really. Indeed, terror was what seemed to fuel this dreadful empire. Miserable beyond imagining, Vagar became a reluctant witness as Mordekaiser's vile deeds empowered him to near immortality. Whether it was over the course of decades or centuries, Vagar never knew, but eventually the Yordle's magic and appearance started to twist in response. Memories of his past faded. Why had he uh, come to Valoran? Where had he come from? Had he known any other life before this? Questions such as these weighed on his fragile mind like the last flickers of light before an eclipse. So, okay, this is what's happening with Vagar. Basically, you know, he's enslaved by Mordekaiser. I'm going to say enslaved. To do these evil doings, to do this evil magic. And he's been doing it for so long that he's basically become this evil mage, right? Like, it, it just became a part of him. He's like... I don't know any other life anymore, right? When the Revenant Warlord's own followers conspired against him, the nightmare of his reign was ended, but by this point, Vagar was uh, nigh unrecognizable. His eyes blazed. Even his voice had become a sneer of malice. 
Fleeing from his ensorcelled cage, the wretched creature had no interest in the wars of succession that inevitably followed. Deep down, he most likely yearned to regain the sense of safety and freedom that all living things crave. And yet he chose not to turn away from evil, but to embrace it. Clad in armor befitting a sinister warlock, he vowed to seize respect in the only way he could remember, through ruthless villainy, inspiring fear in all who encountered him. He would call down the fury of the stars themselves upon his foes and trap them in the timeless infinities between moments. Wow, that sounds evil. <laughs> and yet Vagar could not quite find the same success as his former captor. Certainly the good people of Valorant did learn to fear him to some extent. More often than not, they would not find their pastures scorched or the local baron's mansion raised to its foundations. Sometimes though, inexplicably, bands of brigands would be driven from their woodland hideouts or the remains of feral merc wolves found scattered through the town square, and it was difficult to tell whether these acts were malicious or actually reasonably helpful. For all his aspirations of evil doing, it seemed Vagar would always come up a tiny bit short. So, okay, I see the pun there. Still, the nefarious Yurtal had not abandoned his quest to become the world's most wicked villain. With his diabolic staff in hand, he seeks nothing less to bring all before him to their knees and revels in the timely demise of those who dare to underestimate him. Okay, it's almost like, I don't want to say like Vagar is like a, a meme villain, uh, uh, like a, a, a troll or anything like that, but it's almost like he, so he had to do evil for so long because of Mordekaiser that he kind of like embraced it, but then like there's something inside of him or inside of his heart that I think is kind of preventing him from being truly evil, right? He He's doing these things, but it's almost just to like, for people to see him and to, for people to, it's not for respect. It's just for people to see Vagar, right? Like, I think he's lonely ever since this enslavement. He's got some trauma that he needs to deal with. And this is the only way I think he knows how to deal with it. I'm no psychiatrist or anything, okay? But this is how I'm seeing it, right? Like he has this trauma moment and now he doesn't know what to do. Like that was his purpose in his life. And now he's cast out into the open world. He's like, well, this is the only thing I know how to do and it's to be evil. But then like deep down in his heart and everything, he knows he's still a good person. So it kind of prevents him from being like truly, truly evil. I don't know, maybe I'm looking into it too much. Let's go ahead and read the story and see if we can get some more insight. Our story is called The True and Ghastly Tale of the Beast of Balaham Tower. Bolaham? Bolham? Ham Tower? We'll just call it the Ham Tower, okay? So we don't get this name all butchered throughout the story. Thunder clouds rolled off the Argent Mountains, promising pyrotechnics but delivering none. From the tower, the advancing mob looked like a child's mismatched toys, all toothpick spears and tiny torches. The figure at the head of the group was tall with a splash of gray hair and a blade belted to her homespun tunic. Vagar watched as the group started battering the outer gates, incensed by his villainous ways, demanding justice for the terrible acts he had wrought. Finally, he hurried down the stairs to the inner door. There was a mighty crack as the gates gave way and villagers tumbled into the courtyard. The leader drew her sword in advance, picking her way between ungainly limbs, waiting for the rest of the group to find their feet and hold the right end of their spears. Bending through the gap in the door, Vagar giggled with anticipation. The woman's gaze snapped up. Vagar clapped a gauntlet over his mouth, but the jig was up. The farmers tripped over themselves to cower behind their leader's skirts. It was perfect. He stepped back and barely holding his staff steady with all his booming laughter, blasted open the door with an explosive ball of purple energy. He strode out to the top of the stone steps as the dust settled. He knew how imposing a figure he must strike, his hat barely clearing the enormous door frame, his iron boots sending up sparks and thunder with each giant step, his gauntlet big enough to crush any fool who might challenge him. Unfortunately, the cowering villagers hadn't looked up yet, and holding in an intimidating pose this long was starting to feel forced. He let go of the breath he'd been holding and deflated a little. The villain, shouted the leader, eventually brandishing her blade in his direction. In the shadow beneath his hat, Vagar grinned. He drew himself up as intimidatingly as possible as the villagers beheld him. Then the shouting and wailing began. Delightfully, someone at the back even fainted. So, like, even in this story, right? Like, he's he's just, like, trying too hard to be a villain. You know what I mean? Like, he truly isn't. He's just really trying to be one, you know? He gathered his sinister magic, gaining an inky nimbus and causing violet sparks to leap off spear tips and belt buckles. The leader stumbled back as a serpentine gash of deepest midnight encircled the villagers and it exploded upwards into an ensnaring cage of sorcery. Silence, Vagar commanded them. He relished every long stride down the steps toward the trapped mob. Around them, humming walls of violet light stretched between claw-like pillars, forming an eldritch henge. He stopped barely a sword's length from the leader, clearing at his prisoners through his arcane barrier. I say that, and then he's probably about to do something crazy bad to these villagers. We'll see. I can see the fear in your hearts, he began with a derisive, humorless snort. You dare march here to challenge my dread rule? 
I, Vagar, who has yoked the magic of the universe to my will, Vagar, great master of evil, who has defeated countless arcane foes in my quest for ever greater, cursed my fields with rat weevils for two seasons, you have, an especially cloddish looking farmer cried out, crimson faced with fury. That's so funny. So yeah, like if you have to call yourself the great master of evil, are you really the great master of evil? You know what I mean? Like Vagar blinked, trying to process this interruption. Cursed you with what? And ye turned Dolly lame the week before harvest, claimed an outraged uh, tiller, wag wagging her finger at the increasing befuddled great master of evil with that the banks broke and the villagers began to make all of their grievances heard <laughs> vagar could only catch snippets of the loudest accusations the majority featuring soured milk and undersized beets as he shrunk away from the verbal onslaught the purple berry flickered and collapsed but the villagers didn't even notice they shuffled forward yelling in his face they're not even there to kill him they're just yell there to like yell at him he felt the stone banister of the stairs at his back he was surrounded he tried feebly to respond, his voice losing depth with every word. But I, I am. They crowded closer, glaring now eye to eye with him rather than looking up. This is actually making me feel bad for Vagar a little. He's not a bad person. He, like I keep saying, like he just really is, he's kind of an imposter. Suddenly a commanding older voice rose over the din. Stand down everyone. But Margo, someone began before the leader's glare withered their objection. The mob retreated and Vagar found himself alone with her. She seemed more than twice his height by this point and radiated confidence. He hated her. Oh, he hated her. That's like pronounced there. All right, villain, she spat. You've heard our accusations. Do you plead innocence? Vagar felt like he had been slapped. He puffed out his chest, feeling a foot taller. Innocence? Innocence? He turned and began climbing the steps, gaining height on the crowd. Do you have the audacity to bring your superstitious belly achings to my door and then insult me by asking if I deny them? He glared over his shoulder in their direction. I do. I deny every one of them, but do not dare presume that I claim innocence. You accuse me of evil doing, and I am evil. Since I took this arcane tower from its puny owner, I have burned your fields. I have terrorized your warlords, defeating them so thoroughly that they swore never to return. He took the last two stairs in one great stride, and I have begun my campaign of terror upon neighboring villainous sorcerers. For none will be permitted to obstruct my path to ultimate magical power. He's just like, I don't know. He's This dude's just role-playing a villain at this point. At this, the sky cracked, crackled, and magical bolts hurtled from the clouds, exploding around the courtyard. Vagar threw his head back and laughed, reveling in the sheer glory of his own evil. These puny mortals would beg forgiveness in the face of his terrible magnificence. When he stopped for breath, the villagers were conferring in a huddle, casting appraising glances in his direction. One of them popped her head up. Did you defeat Vixus the Cruel, the Warlord? Of course I did, she failed to exhibit proper deference, and I... His words trailed off as the group returned to their earnest whispers. Vagar shifted uncomfortably, straining to hear what they were saying. One by one, the mob nodded to each other and turned to face him. They found him coolly admiring the polished gleam of his gauntlet. The leader, Margot, strode to the bottom of the steps, awkwardly half-bowing, and addressed him, Oh, great and mighty, uh, sorcerer? Wizard, Vagar corrected her. Wait, so they're actually going to be like, oh, Vagar, you did us a good thing. Thank you. <laughs> mighty wizard, we the residents of the barely worth bothering vi with village of, uh, Ham. That's our village, someone helpfully interjected. Margot sighed, yes, our village. Well, you see, we've come to our senses and do humbly beg the mighty wizard, Grey Jar... It's Vagar. Sorry, Vagar. We humbly beg that you spare us and just, um, you know, keep doing what you're doing. What they're realizing is they're like talking. It's like talking to a child and like letting him pretend that he's evil. <laughs> right? Keep doing what you're doing. Vagar narrowed his eyes. What do you mean? Well, you know, we'll just go home and you keep doing your reign of terror thingy and live and let terrorize. That's what I say. This had to be some kind of trick. And yet she went on. Of course, we'd exhibit the proper, you know, deference. Curse your name in your absence. Spread tales of your vile rampage. Frank says his cousin down in Glorf, uh, yeah, Glorf heard a rumor of an evil sorcerer. If you'd be interested in, you know, destroying them and taking their dread sorceries for my own. Vagar clenched his gauntleted hand, imagining the sweet triumph of crushing an arcane peer in a wizard battle. I just can't, I can't take Vagar serious, but it's like actually really funny. Margo was watching him carefully. Hopefully Vagar realized. Finally, after a long pause, he rolled his eyes and flourished his staff. You fools, you thought you could trick me. Vagar, master of evil, perhaps you hoped I would grant you the mercy of a swift and painless end. Well, I regret to inform you that your lives are simply not worth my time. He laughed a big booming laugh to match his renewed stature. Take yourselves from my sight, insignificant peasants. Return to Ham and pray I do not find you worthy of my attention ever again. The villagers managed a few half-hearted bows of curtsy or curtsies before shuffling back toward the damaged archway. Margo chanced a quick wink at him, then turned to leave. Wait, he thundered, her hand snapped to the pommel of her sword. 
With as much indifference as he could muster, Vagar edged his way down the steps once more. When do you think I could talk to Frank's cousin about that other sorcerer? <laughs> Dude, um, this story honestly made me love his character. He he feels like a cartoon character. Like, right? Like, he feels like... I, I can't think of a good example right now. But he feels like, you know, the cartoon character. Think of any cartoon. And there's, like, the supposed bad person in the show. But they're not really bad. They just, like, want to be bad or whatever. That's what Vagar is giving me. And it's actually really funny. And then the fact that the villagers are like, oh, guys, guys, guys. He just wants to be bad. But he's he's totally just like, he's not really that bad. Let's just, let's go with it, right? Let's just go with it. So they're like, we'll get out of it, whatever. You know, he took out this other sorcerer that was actually, actually bad. So let's just keep going with it. I thought that was hilarious. And hopefully when we get to the voice lines, they'll be just as funny uh voice lines and stuff because i think this story was one of the more funny ones that i've ever read so far all right so we're gonna start off with his abilities first and then there is a wild rifts video that we can actually take a look at but i know sometimes wild rift has things a little bit different so let's just look at his abilities in league of legends difficulty is moderate for vagar let's see so his passive ability is phenomenal evil power Vagar is the greatest evil to ever strike at the hearts of Runeterra, and he's only getting bigger. Striking an enemy champion with a spell or scoring a takedown grants Vagar permanently increased ability power. Oh, I feel like that's pretty damn good, right? So I'm assuming ability power is going to be like the main thing you're going to focus on for Vagar when you get like items and stuff. His Q is Baleful Strike. Vagar unleashes a bolt of dark energy that deals magic damage to the first two enemies hit. Units killed by this bolt grant Vagar some ability power permanently. Wow, yeah, so permanently granting ability power seems very good. And it hits two people, you know, the chances of it hitting two people, though, you know, probably not. You know, it might happen, right, randomly, but that's cool. It's a good ability. Next up, we have W, which is dark matter. It's a small little circle, it looks like. Vagar calls a great mass of dark matter to fall from the sky to target location, dealing magic damage when it lands. Stacks of phenomenal evil reduce dark matter's cooldown. Stacks of phenomenal evil. So the the passive here, got it. Okay, it's a it's a typical, like, AoE. It, has, it looks like it has a little bit of a delay, but you can time it perfectly right, you know? E is event horizon. It's another circle. Vagar twists the edges of space creating a cage that stuns enemies that pass through okay so this is kind of what i would imagine came from the story when he trapped all those villagers something like this sort of but it looks like creating a cage that stuns enemies that pass through it so if you walk right through it it literally stuns you otherwise you want to stay in that circle probably moving around that's a very good ability i feel like uh and then the ultimate is primordial burst it's just a giant like orb or whatever blast target enemy champion dealing a large amount of magic damage increased based on the target's missing health oh, okay so missing health you want to target somebody that's already kind of weak with it and it'll possibly kill them those all seem like pretty sorcerer wizard mage abilities um pretty basic in my opinion the difficulty being moderate maybe because he doesn't have any like movement abilities with him and maybe i don't know what role he actually plays like what lane he plays or anything like that and then probably like stacking up the ability power permanently is probably something you got to get like good at i'm not quite sure but yeah i mean he just seems like he's a big damage dealer straight up okay i do want to see him in wild rift this video is about two years old so let's give this a watch it's two minutes long let's see if the abilities are any different in wild rift i don't know if they will be but we also get a glimpse of his abilities okay okay i think that was his e there there's the cage cool they got stunned and then he hit him with a blast kill minions with abilities to stack okay Oh, in Wild Rift, it looks like it's more of a... Oh, no. Okay, it's the same. Uh, hit enemy champs with abilities to stack. Okay, it's just showing both methods of the passive here. Gain more stacks with takedowns. Okay, so it's showing you can get more stacks if you kill somebody. Stacks grant permanent ability power. Yeah, using your stacks... Um, wisely is probably what the skill comes from fire magic bolt at the first two enemy units call dark matter to the target area right right okay gain vision of area oh you could use that to gain vision as well that's good at use of it stacks from passive reduce the cooldown right so keeping your stacks high and everything like that seem like the, the thing you got to do event horizon form a cage in target area 
Yeah, see, that that's such a good ability in my opinion. I'm wondering if you can use movement abilities to like get through it. And then blast target enemy with a magic bolt. Damage based on targets missing health. Yeah, there you go. Make them cower before your villainous power. Wow, the rhyme though. Okay, we're seeing a little bit of Vagar in action here. Cool, cool. I smell death. I smell death. Oh, oh, that's an interesting skin. I like it. Hopefully that's not a Wild Rift specific skin. I know they've started doing that recently with some of the skins. All right, this one's a little bit of an older trailer. It doesn't even have 1080p because it's nine years old, but it's just a skins trailer for Final Voss Vagar. I didn't want to skip it. Let's go ahead and take, uh, you know, take a look at it. It's, it's one minute long. Ooh. This isn't even my final form. <laughs> What is a champion? A miserable pile of pixels. I like this intro to the skin. This is kind of fun. Yeah, it's doing like the old JRPG. This is a fun skin trailer. It's pretty unique in my opinion. He's fighting Hecarim, Sona, and Misfortune. This is cool. Super unique. Oh, I love the laugh. All right, all you have left is Sona. My power's over 9,000, come on. All the gaming, anime, voice lines in this. That was fun. Okay, we didn't even really get like a good look at the skin, to be honest with you. We'll take a look at it later in this reaction, but that was a fun skin trailer. Okay, looks like our boy is in Legends of Runeterra and actually has his own uh, reveal trailer. Okay, here we go. He is a four mana one four. When I'm summoned, create a darkness in hand if you don't have one. Round start, grant your darkness everywhere one extra damage. And then level up when you've dealt 12 plus damage with darkness. Cool. I'm really liking Vagar. I don't know, I just love his lore. It's like I can't take him serious as a villain, you know? Time to reveal our superior battle tactics. Darkness, dealing five damage, that's cool. So it just levels up, huh? <laughs> Dark, love acolyte, okay. Event horizon, we know that. Oh, that was a cool animation. So it just stunned all of them. Wow, what a card. Using darkness again. To kill, was that Poppy? Oh, that was a fun level up animation. I really like that one in his tower and he just like shoots a bolt into the sky. All right, so now he's a two five. He looks like he's inside of a bigger Vagar mech suit. What the heck? All right, so four mana two five, Grand Overseer Vagar. When I'm summoning round start, create a darkness in hand. If you don't have one, round start, grant your darkness everywhere. One extra damage. Your darkness can target anything. Okay, so the big thing here is the darkness can now target anything. That's really the biggest difference besides the one extra, you know, attack, but cool. So you could just use it, throw it right at their nexus, yeah? If you survive long enough and don't get it discarded. Lights out. I know we've barely gotten into Vagar, but yeah, I just love everything about his aesthetic and his character so far. I can barely understand him, but he says, you'll bow to me. Okay, what other cards come in this? Event Horizon, Dark Bulb, Acolyte, Tenor of Terror. Uh, okay, Twisted Catalyzer, is that a cat? Wizened Wizard, okay, cool. What other cards, is that it? 
very nice so this came out august 2020 or yeah, probably 2022 now? 2021, I think, probably. Very cool. You guys will have to let me know how Vagar is in Legends of Runeterra. All right, looks like our boy has a decent amount of skins. He is an older champion, so it does make sense that he would have at least a decent amount at this point, right? Okay, cool. So here's our original design. I am going to do a top three favorite skins on this one because it looks like we have enough to do that. Uh, the original design i think is very good it's kind of given off i mean we don't see his face you just see the eyes maybe we'll get a little bit more detail into that in the fandom wiki how he came to like look like this or if we truly know what he looks like uh, but yeah let's keep going next is white mage okay this is an older skin so you know they really just kind of did a recolor and probably changed up a little bit with the staff it looks like uh but i know we're gonna get some better skins so let's keep going curl <laughs> curling they gave Vagar a curling skin. That is not what I expected. But um, okay, curling skin exists. Or we're gonna keep going. Vagar Greybeard. Okay, we did a uh, we did a Lord of the Rings kind of Gandalf thing going on here. A suspiciously helpful wizard. The party meets early in their adventure. Vagar Greybeard holds a dastardly secret. He's the true villain of Rift Quest. Okay, this is cool. Yeah, this is basically a Gandalf skin. I wonder how good it is. You know, these older skins, I think these uh, newer ones are probably going to be a lot better. Let's keep going. Okay, these skin. I know he's kind of a meme. I feel like, like, he's not, he's like such a troll as a villain. Let's be honest. This leprechaun one, come on. It, it looks so bad. I don't like it. Okay, but you know what? We got to have some leprechaun representation. All right, fine. Next is Baron Vaughn. What? Is it like uh, rulers of the new Bandle Republic? Vagar considers himself the ultimate dark power of the wasteland. Oh, it's like a wasteland kind of like fallout kind of style. Okay. You know, the gauntlet is another thing that I need to be paying attention to because I know the gauntlets are pretty much part of his aesthetic along with his staff. Uh, the gauntlet in this looks kind of weird. Let's keep going. Superb villain. Is this the one this, no, this is the one that we saw in the Wild Rift um, trailer. This looked actually really good in the Wild Rift trailer. So this is a contender possibly. I do like the superb villain one. Next is Bad Santa. <laughs> Vagar is getting the most random skins, I swear. You know, I do love me some Christmas skins, to be honest. Uh, like, especially in Overwatch, I do like those a lot. So this, you know, I'm not going to knock it. I actually want to look at the 3D on this one because we don't get like a good look. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I kind of love it because of the candy cane. I do kind of love it because of the candy cane. And like, if I had this skin, I would obviously rock it during winter time. And I think it'd be really fun. Next is final boss. Okay, the final boss one. I loved this trailer that they had for the skin. I thought that was really fun. This one probably also has extra uh, voice lines to it. That's probably also why it costs so much. And yeah, it's got like the gamer like scenario with the gauntlet here. The gauntlet is actually really clever with the D-pad. I did not think about that. That's actually awesome. I feel like the gauntlet being a controller kind of escalates this one to the next level. Okay, that one is a contender for right now. Next up is Omega Squad. Ooh, what's going on here? A heavy artillery specialist with a serious chip on his soldier, uh, shoulder. Vagar has a troubling habit of calling down huge amounts of explosive ordnance for even the most mundane problems. He thinks of it as a fun quirk. So he turned into Ziggs a little bit, huh? Okay, I like the pointy... I don't even know. Is that his hair or his ears? Or is that just like part of his clothing? The gauntlet is a giant just like detonator button. That's kind of fun too. I like this one. It does make him look pretty evil. That one's a contender as well. Let's keep going. I don't know if I've been wowed just yet by any of the skins though. Elderwood. Oh God, he looks scary. This immediately, based on the eyes from the artwork, immediately reminds me of uh, Majora's Mask. For those of you that know the reference, I might be, I mean, am I showing my age by saying Majora's Mask? I know it's an old Nintendo 64 game, so, but like everybody knows that game, right? Anyways, I don't generally like the Elderwood ones, but I'm not hating on this one that much. I do like the mushroom staff. I do like the colors, not all of them necessarily, but I do also like his face and his eyes on this one. I think that's what's, again, like it reminds me of Majora's Mask. So that's why I kind of like it. Fury Horn cosplay. Um, okay. So, you, you know, of course they had to do like a cute Vagar, right? Of course, of course. Is that a spatula? Looks like a spatula to me. 
I like it, but I don't know if I like it enough. You know, okay, every every champion I feel like needs to have, well, maybe not necessarily. I feel like a lot of champions should have a cutesy little uh, skin like this. And I think it's fine for Vagar because I don't see him as like a true villain. But like if they had like a cutesy one like this for Mordekaiser, I don't think I'd be about it personally. I think this is fine, but I don't think it's my favorite. Let's keep going. Astronaut. What is this? He's in a picture with Ramus. Okay. Astronaut Vagar. He looks like an alien. He looks kind of crazy. This looks really interesting. Like, I don't even know how to talk about this skin. It's so, like, kind of bonkers looking, I feel like. And I don't even say bonkers ever, but it's just weird. Like, in a good way, but also, I don't know. I like the gauntlet like the claws on this one because they they change color based on which one you choose. I like it, but it's it's like a weird one. I don't know. Let's keep going. Monster Tamer Vagar. Oh, okay. This one's also a little like cutesy, but I like the mask. Is it a mask he has on? And he also has the little pet that also has a mask. I like the Vagar one, or I mean, I like this Monster Tamer one. There's something about, okay, the colors helps this one a lot. I like I actually like the bright colors on this one, even yellow, even though the yellow would probably be terrible in the actual game. I like the colors on this one. For some reason, it's giving Mario a little bit, like in terms of like the colors that they chose here. Like I would see these kind of colors in a Mario game or something. I like Vega or I like Monster Tamer. I like that one. Lask is King Beegar. What? Okay, so they turned him into a bee. I like the staff. I like the honey, obviously. Honey's always good. What else we got? Let's see these other colors. Um, It's good because of the crown. I do like the crown, but I don't know. He's got honey as his gauntlet. He's just got like a honey hand, which is kind of not as clever as I think they could have gone with it, but it's good. I think this is a good skin. It's definitely better than like any of the older skins that you see for Vagar. So I like it, but it's not top three. I think I got my top three here, folks. So let me give it to you. I think Monster Tamer, yeah, Monster Tamer is in the top three. Astronaut's weird. I like it, but it's weird. Um, the next one is going to be Elderwood. I'm surprising myself with that one. And then the last one, it's not actually going to be this one. It's going to be the final boss one. I actually really like the final boss one because specifically it also keeps kind of like the Vagar look. And then it's just, you know what I mean? Final boss Vagar. It's like kind of poetic to have him as a final boss and have that as a skin. So I really like that one. Let me hear from you guys though, what your favorite uh, skins are for Vagar. All right, just a tiny bit of trivia on this page. It says Vagar is one of the 15 champions that have an ability that infinitely stacks an effect. In Vagar's case, phenomenal evil power infinitely stacks his ability power. Okay, it's infinite. When Vagar uses primordial burst to kill an enemy champion, he will laugh malevolently. Oh, I love that actually. And then Vagar possesses the most laugh emotes of any champion at six. He has six laugh emotes. See that like, ah, I feel like that goes with the, in line with his character of like, he just is trying to be evil. That's why he has all these laugh emotes, right? He's just trying too hard almost. All right, let's take a look at the fandom wiki. I'm skipping over some early life stuff and just like the typical stuff that we've already read. But in here in the under Mordekaiser's rule, let's see, it says Mordekaiser forced him to twist his magic to hurt others and use him to uh, bring destruction to all who oppose the tyrant. The trauma of those atrocities I mentioned earlier, changed Vagar's personality and appearance. Yet no one's reign lasts forever, and Mordekaiser was betrayed and overthrown by his servants, LeBlanc and, you know, others, and the Noxai tribes led by their god. Okay, after Mordekaiser's rule, yet unlike his former captor, he wasn't so brutal. Indeed, sometimes he burned pastures to destroy the mansions of barons. Vagar also drove out brigands and warlords, murdered terrible creatures of darkness, defeated warlocks, and took their magic artifacts. So it was difficult for the good people of Valorant to tell whether these acts were malicious or actually reasonably helpful right because he's just doing like i don't know right all right let's see modern history at some point in time vagar conquered a castle somewhere vagar became a dark lord with his own numerous minions and yordle followers among them are dark bulb acolyte and twisted catalyzer who accumulate darkness and mana respectively a wizened wizard who restores runes of long forgotten folios with the help of shadow magic stilted robe maker engaged in fashion at court especially in the matter of increasing height Tenor of Terror. I feel like we're going to learn about this when we get to his uh, special interactions in Legends of Runeterra. Tenor of Terror and his brother, uh, Bass of Burden, Base of Burden, proclaiming the greatness of their master and a mysterious mirror mage possibly connected with the distant past. Ooh, who is Mirror Mage? Okay. In this castle, dangerous artifacts are gradually accumulating and ancient dark knowledge is being restored. 
New inventions manifest themselves in the form of war machines combined with artifacts from the dark past. The representation of such a gloomy genius can be the Grand Overseer, a combat mecha equipped with the Rabadon's death cap. That's what it is. Okay, and the Morella Nomicon. Step by step, the military power of Vagar and his forces is growing. He also wrote a book, How to Be a Supervillain. <laughs> no way did he read a, or no way did he write a book called How to Be a Supervillain. <laughs> Oh, okay. You know what? This is also giving. Oh my god! I don't know why I didn't think of it until now. This is giving Gru from Minions, is it not? It's Gru from Minions, and now he even has his own little Minions, right? I'm just saying. Okay, appearance. Vagar is a small, even for Yordle standards, individual. Oh, poor guy. His appearance is obscured under his blue and purple cloak and large hat, which are adorned with many spikes. His most notable accessories are his abnormally large right glove, as well as his axe-like staff with a gem on its tip. Under his clothing, Vagar has black fur and stark yellow eyes. He resembles a black cat. Oh, okay. So he is straight up, he has black fur and the yellow eyes are just his eyes. But it like there's like some glowiness to them, but I think it's just to give the persona of like a villain, right? Personality. When he first came to Runeterra, Vagar was an enthusiastic and curious Yordle that wished to learn more about magic. This curiosity led him to leave Bandle City and go to Runeterra and search for knowledge. There he was delighted with the knowledge that he acquired and put all his effort in becoming a powerful mage. When the Warlord Mordekaiser caught him, he was tortured for a year under the Warlord's brutal watch. This torture broke the Yordle's mind. With his personality broken, he reimagined himself as a terrible tyrant with a thirst for power. Under his new persona, Vagar is obsessed with the aesthetics of villainy. That's what it is. He's obsessed with the aesthetics of it. He's arrogant, melodramatic, and antagonistic, constantly causing chaos in the hopes of getting the attention from others. This often leads to frustration as most of his attempts of villainy either lead or led to mild annoyances or instead led to great good. He is also territorial in his search for power, aggressively going after anyone that he considers a rival in his quest for power, which oftentimes accidentally leads to him coming in direct blows with and defeating other dark sorcerers and other evils, accidentally helping many on his path. It's possible that Vagar's acts of good might not be as accidental as it might first appear, but instead is subconscious guiding his actions towards good, while his conscious mind, too broken by Mordekaiser's cruelty, rationalizes it to fit his in his persona of villain. See, this is, I, I feel like I got it right on the nose earlier. This was put into a little bit better words, in my opinion. But basically, yeah, this is what I said earlier when we were reading, I think, the story. All right, let's take a look at his abilities. Oh, man, there's a crap ton of them. Okay, Yordle Physiology. Vagar is a Yordle, a being coming from the spirit realm and possesses several abilities natural of his species. Immortality. Being spiritual beings, Yordles don't age the same way as normal humans, and they can't normally die. Yordle Magic. Just like any Yordle, Vagar is capable of performing Yordle Magic, which he utilizes in tandem with other magics he has learned. He is a master sorcerer. Vagar has studied and mastered many types of magic. He learned long forgotten spells that are many thousands of years old. His will is strong enough to learn and grow stronger over the centuries. Spiritual magic. Like any Yordle, Vagar has a deep connection with the spirit world, but due to the fact that Mordekaiser bound Vagar to the physical plane and forced him to cast grimly enchantments, he learned to use dark spells. Now he controls the darkness itself, so his native Yordle magic has taken a darker form. Elemental magic. Little is known about what knowledge Vagar has achieved in elemental magic, but he is erudite enough to be aware about dark matter and is able to manipulate it. Celestial magic, which he first was like trying to learn, right? Vagar has mastery over the power of the stars. By harnessing celestial magic, Vagar can create powerful blasts of energy, summon meteors of dark matter from the skies, he would call down the fury of the stars themselves upon his foes and create gravitational fields to trap them in the timeless infinities between moments that paralyzed his foes. Cosmic magic. Combining celestial, elemental, and primordial spiritual magic, Vagar can simultaneously cast spells both of destruction and creation, such as primordial burst. Uh, leader. Vagar has shown to be a competent leader, being able to lend his small group of Yordles towards his goals. Also like a true dark lord, Vagar commands an army of minions. This dude is just Gru. He's actually just Gru. Okay, anyways. Artifacts. Despite his magical power, Vagar continues to accumulate dark knowledge and collect magical artifacts. With them equipped, he becomes much more powerful. So we do have the Grand Overseer. By the use of dark magics, Vagar is able to control the Grand Overseer mech equipped with an enhanced staff as well as the Morella Nomicon and the Rabadan's uh, death cap. Cool. All right, very small relation section. It kind of makes sense because, I mean, yeah, he's been isolated from Mandel City and all that. Uh, relations, Mordekaiser, Mordekaiser tortured Vagar to gain knowledge about other realms. Eventually, Vagar's personality would shape to be more like his captors. 
However, due to his yordle nature, he could never perfect his master's cruelty, only a caricature of it. LeBlanc. Vagar knew LeBlanc, who was also forced to work for Mordekaiser. Yeah, I, I, it makes sense that they would know each other. We don't exactly maybe know. Maybe there's a voice line or something. We'll see. And then Lulu. In the old lore, Vagar is a friend of Lulu. In the current lore, Vagar is related to Lulu. Their connection in the new lore is left unambiguous. Okay, so yeah, they're just related. But there's no, okay, maybe a voice line again, hopefully. We'll have to see. Small little trivia at the bottom. It says, uh, Vagar is over 1,500 years old as he was present during Mordekaiser's second crusade. He was possibly captured by the Iron Revenant between or around 400 BN or 1400 years ago. He was possibly affected by Stockholm Syndrome after being held captive for years by Mordekaiser. Ah, yeah, that, yep. Mirror Mage could be LeBlanc's servant secretly manipulating Vagar so that he could confront Mordekaiser in the future. Interesting. If after the defeat of Mordekaiser, Vagar didn't go far anywhere, then he may now be somewhere in the vicinity of Noxus. The fact that the Noxians don't bother him, despite the facts of his victories over local warlords and sorcerers, may be due to the secret patronage of LeBlanc. Theoretically, if Mordekaiser will bring Vagar to Mitna Rakun, Raknun, then Vagar will be able to destroy the pocket realm by using the cosmic magic and in particular his spell Primordial Burst, thereby freeing all the souls captured there, and LeBlanc will finally defeat the Iron Revenant. Oh, that's, um, that's some theory there. So there's a possibility of Vagar with all his magic combined and all the magic uh, knowledge that he has, he might be able to defeat the Iron Revenant and free all the souls and stuff. Very interesting. Again, it seems like that's just theory though. All right, folks, let's go ahead and get into these special interactions. We're gonna start off with the Legends of Runeterra ones, and I believe there's actually not that many for Leo Legends. They haven't done anything for his Leo Legends voice line. So this is kind of gonna be like the big voice line section of the video, but here we go. Starting off with Vagar, Ally arriving, and it's Senna. Okay. Bring me darkness, Senna, and perhaps I will let you leave. <laughs> okay, I'm pausing already. He's got like such a... I don't know. His voice. It's a good thing you're cute, Vags. Vags. His voice sounds like such a troll, I feel like. Together, Senna, we can rule the world. Yeah, he sounds exactly like a cartoon character on like Cartoon Network from like Dexter's Laboratory or you know what I mean? Like some random cartoon. He's got that kind of voice to him. I wonder who the voice actor is. Yeah, I'm going to leave that to you, little guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's Vagar. Lord Vagar, thank you. And hello, Senna. <laughs> okay, I love it already. Lord Vagar, thank you. They Vagar, seem to be getting along. I brought the darkness. Oh, oh, oh bring the doom. <laughs> oh, that giggle is hilarious. Oh, someone to rival my power. Oh. You, you are joking, right? <laughs> I've oh. never heard uh, Zareth have a voice line yet until then. Hero emerges. Poppy. I'm no hero, but I'm still gonna try. Hmm. Come in short, will they? No. <laughs> uh, 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 to Timo? Aw, only for a yordle. Oh, Dark. right. There, we read that in, in the fandom that he is short for a yordle, which is kind of funny. So funny! Huh? What was that? <laughs> Finally, the car. I'm glad we're getting some yordle interactions, but Timo just being like, what? What What did I hear? And not really caring is perfect for Vagar. This is complete. We will oh. sing of your dark rule, Lord Vega. That voice. The tall tree, the <clears throat> tallest tree. Okay, these are his yes, minions, right? Sing of my magnificent spud. These are his minions in like his castle. I want my hat, and I want it now. <laughs> Lord Vega, you cannot rush perfection. Dude, uh, the his um his minions all have unique voices as well. Oh, the mana crystal number three. Number three? Soon, Lord Vagar. It will be ready soon. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He has them numbered? How fair the preparations, oh understudy. How fair the preparations. Just a few more pages, Lord Vagar, then doom. <laughs> these are fantastic. I'm sorry if you don't like these voice lines, but I think they're My so funny. Magic. Your mirrors. The whole world shall witness your power, Lord Vagar. Right, now Mirror Mage is a little sus. <laughs> Reach for the lightning, my incomprehensible lackey! <laughs> Getting excited at darkness, that's hilarious. The darkness consume 
lose you. Oh, and this this voice line now makes sense with the whole darkness thing because literally his card summons darkness. Got it. Just hold there a minute. That's for oh, his yeah event horizon ability. <laughs> of course he'd do that. You, tiny mortal. <laughs> That's such a perfect line for Vagar 2 calling somebody a tiny mortal when he himself is so tiny. Look at the puny creature. Oh my god, come on, dude. Oh yes. They should be afraid. They can delay, but they cannot deny my power. Okay, hold on. I'm hearing like this isn't like I, I'm getting hints of like South Park uh, voice actor in there, but there's no way it is. The way he said deny, it kind of sounds like Cartman almost. Imagine the world suffering. Ooh, that one got a little no, more serious. Who shall I destroy first? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The best mage of all time. The world will bow to me. Dude, I'm sorry, but Vagar's hilarious. Like, no, 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 this isn't over. Even if I didn't go into, okay, like if I didn't read the story of biography and found out that like nobody takes him seriously, I already wouldn't take him seriously from just these voice lines, you know? I should return better and bigger. Better and this bigger. Is the last time that Vagar fails. Okay, so now we have a Grand Overseer Vagar voice line. This is him after dragon. leveling up. The miniature Good cat. Lord. <laughs> I love Caitlin's response to that. A true test of my power. A true test for you, but not for me. Mm. Vagar, you are so scary. <laughs> you are very brave, puppy, speaking to me. <laughs> wow, a real villain. Okay, Poppy. No hero can. Now I kind of want to react to Poppy just because of her voice lines with Vagar specifically. She seems very like, I don't know, not even like phased by Vagar, like everybody else. I but... Vagar, of worlds. Well, I'm just Poppy, but I'm gonna stop you. <laughs> See, like that, that that's a funny response. With our crystals combined. <laughs> I just want to listen to some of these voice lines for his minions. I think it's a good idea. Wait. Good, my mother's friend. I totally understood that. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did how did Skin Spotlights um put the subtitles for that? Oh, All right, yeah, here's more of his minions. Delight the masses. Delight or terrify, only taste will tell. Their voices are so brother, good. Ready for laughter or slaughter. They are merely an S away, brother. Oh ho! S away. Care for a little song, Lord Vega. Mm. Don't use that word. But yes, please, thank you. Wait, what song? Oh, little? <laughs> Is it little? I was like, wait a minute. What? What word? What word? But it's got to be little. That's me, great. Me, 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 me. You, 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 you. <laughs> oh, okay, you can hear him a little bit. Enunciate, my boy. Enunciate. <laughs> oh, Who is that? Care for your measurements. This will be kept private. Right. Oh, that's hilarious. Perhaps vertical stripes might suit Lord Vega. Why? What are you trying to say? Yeah, Lord what is Vega, he trying to say? Your platform boots are finally Platform ready. boots. Uh, yes, uh, the, the landing platform. Yes, good. <laughs> okay, so clearly he has. Even as a Yordle, right? Which Yordles are shorter than like everybody else in the world of Runeterra. He still has a um, insecurity about his height. Yeah. Who's now? <laughs> See, exactly. Strut, Lord Vega. Strut. <laughs> Lord Vega, our stage is set. I'm loving all of this. <laughs> yeah, like all the interactions between him and his minions are so good. Brother, me before you. This world is positively uppity downity, brother. <laughs> there he stood on his balcony, his palms crackling. These two are hilarious. He the bass and tenor. Below, and lo, did he see world laughing in ecstasy. So he smote and he broke 
those puny fools. Okay. Raised and he ruined with magic most cruel. I'm getting a song about Vagar here. As he raised his staff to the stars and roared, fear me, world, for I am Lord Vagar. Oh, that was awesome. Come to witness my ingenuity, Lord Vagar. Stretching my legs, number three. It's a tall people thing. I'm getting Ren and Stimpy now, too. <laughs> okay. Bring me your darkness, my Zeph, comrade! <laughs> I love that voice line. That one's good. Teach the fools to fear, Lord Vagar! <laughs> Lord Vagar, the magic of oh, your in the wizard. The world will tremble at my power! Okay. Ah, oh, Lord Vagar, your arrival is so timely! So you timely. Really called for me, number four. Number four. So now we know who number four is. Who's number two? Who's number three? Number four? You know what I mean? Like, I kind of want to know. <laughs> Bring mm -hmm. your sample here and lay off the lightning. Hmm? Look at your work, my lovely. See okay, what you've mage. become. <laughs> so powerful, Lord Vagar, and so tall. Oh, my. Keep talking, little one. <laughs> No, you cannot call him tall. Nothing like she knows exactly what she's doing, man. All right, guys. I don't know about you, but these were super fun. I just love Vagar and like the interactions with his minions, his number two, number three, number four. Like it's so fun. And then I liked actually getting the interactions between the minions as well because we got to hear that song about Vagar and just kind of like how they hype him up. It's really, really funny. Obviously, the dude has an insecurity about one being very very short even shorter than normal yordles and number two about being kind of a villain really like he has an insecurity about it he's like i have to look like a villain i have to be a villain right he has such insecurities about both of those things it's great i think they're kind of like them the vagar and the whole minions uh, in the castle are like kind of a funny just group as a whole like i'm not even mad that we didn't really get too many interactions with vagar and other people you know we got a couple in here which was nice the the one with Zareth is a little random i feel like i don't know why maybe he's having interactions with him but other than that like it's just really funny. I do like the interaction, though, between him and Poppy. I guess is Poppy supposed to be like the quote unquote Yordle hero and then he's quote unquote the Yordle villain. I think Poppy would be kind of like the opposite of Vagar. She seems like she's also just trying to be a hero and he's trying to be a villain. So that's very funny. I enjoyed these a lot more than I thought I would. So I, I don't know. I, I kind of went in with no expectations on his voice lines, but we got better than what I thought we would personally. Now, it does suck that we don't have too many for League of Legends, but like these were honestly fantastic. And just him trying to be, you know, this insecure villain is just such a funny character to me. Okay, I did find some more interactions. This is called Vagar being vertically challenged for three whole minutes. And these are just some Vagar interactions. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh is weird. Okay. Vega, I wasn't sure you'd make it on such short notice. Oh my god. You can't use the word little. You can't use the word short around him. What else can't you use? This is great. Day -day. Kill Caitlin. <laughs> That's perfect. Not or Day -day, not not Scalio. Oh my god. I suppose you're allowed. <laughs> That's funny as well. Vagar, there you are, my little matey. Dude, come on. What did you call me? Dude, I oh, he's getting serious there. All right, a couple Hello, more, Galio. Big metal mage man. Big metal mage man. I am not <laughs> yeah, he called him big this time. He was Vagar. so ready to be angry. Now this will be <laughs> a big fight, eh? Galio. Never heard Galio's it. voice before. Very manly. Okay, cool. That was fun to just get a little extra, like, we got a little extra spice with Caitlyn and a little extra spice with Galio and that. Okay, here are some League of Legends quotes that we found. Hey, Vagar. Bex. You're at a 10. I need you to take it down to, like, a 2. Oh, I already think I'm going to love when we get to Vex. Evil needs a new master. These are when they see oh, Vagar. Okay. Vagar. I like this Such though. Such exquisite torment I gifted you. Ooh, that's oh, kind of scary. You're cute when you're angry. <laughs> oh, 
Gar, tell me all about your diabolical plan. Oh my god, I love that the other Yordles still don't take him serious. Okay, that was just a little quick snippet of some more voice lines. We're having to kind of look around for all of them, so that's totally fine though. Okay, now we found a very old one. This is an 11 year old video, so these are like the original Vagar voices. Let's listen to them. It's about a minute. I long. will swallow your soul. Ooh. Even death trembles in my presence. Ooh, the voice is a little different, you can tell. Give up now! Even now, your loved ones suffer! It's kind of the same. I can see the fear in your heart! <laughs> your soul will come to serve me! It's kind of more annoying, to be honest. I am evil! Stop laughing! Okay. Stop laughing. It's black and blue and is about to show you the definition of pain! <laughs> Oh, let's hear these laughs. He's supposed to have six? Oh, the third one. Oh, that, that fourth and fifth one are so good. I like four and five the most. I smell death. I smell yes. death. Stalking prey again? Suffering awaits. I've heard that voice line. It must be from TFT or something. The magic. It calls to me. Your commands tire me. It's only a short way. Is that a short joke? Oh, you, there's another one. You deny the darkness in your soul. You deny your power. <laughs> All right, guys. That's going to do it for the voice lines for Vagar. We could do the final boss voice lines for him, but maybe we'll do that in like a whole nother video or something. At some point, I think I'm going to start doing like specific voice lines, like for the skins and alternate universes later down the road, we'll start going into those at some point. But anyways, Vagar, again, I came into this knowing nothing about him and I came out loving his character. He is just such a cartoon character to me. You know, the typical wants to be a villain, but always fails kind of like I'm doing another example. Obviously he's like grew from minions, but I kind of feel like he's like team rocket and Pokemon. Like He's the villain that will always fail or not really do anything all that evil. You know what I mean? I guess he doesn't fail that often, but he, well, no, actually he does kind of fail. He tries to do something like terribly, you know, villainous and he ends up like helping people, right? That's not necessarily Team Rocket, but I feel like it's a good example of like a comparison there. I think the voice lines and him getting so angry about being short is so good because I don't know if we have that for any other Yordles. You guys let me know in the comments if there are like any other Yordles that have comments about them or like they don't like being called short or anything like that because I think he's definitely the first one. I think we've only reacted to Kled and I forgive me if I'm forgetting of another Yordle that I've reacted to, but I don't recall Kled ever being angry about being short or anything or being called short, right? And I feel like, you know, that's obviously because he's trying to be big evil man and it's obviously like a big insecurity for him, but I think it's so funny. In terms of where Vagar could go in the future for lore wise, I'm not sure what they could do. Currently he's what? He's at a castle, he's got his minions, his number two, number three, number four, et cetera, et cetera. And I think he's kind of cozy there, right? He's off killing other like sorcerers that are competition to him. He has his minions doing stuff, getting darkness, yada, yada. I think he's kind of fine where he is. If anything were to happen, it would be when like Mordekaiser, if Mordekaiser ever comes back. Or I guess there's that possible lore that we read in the fandom about him being able to destroy the Iron Revenant based on like the magic abilities that he's learned and everything like that. Those would be the two big things I could see in the future lore wise, like Mordekaiser coming back and like Vagar having trauma from it or or something, right? He could either join Mordekaiser, which I don't know if he would do that, or he would go up against more, you know what I mean? Like that'd be kind of interesting actually to see what would happen there. And then the, the theory about like the whole destroying the Iron Revenant thing would also be kind of interesting if we ever see that come to fruition. That might be something that they try to do in the MMO for like a storyline or something though. All right guys, I really don't have much more to say about Vagar. He was a very fun one. I think so far he's definitely, I haven't reacted to too many Yordles, but he is definitely one of my favorites so far. And I see why you guys voted for him in our little poll that we had for the Yordles and stuff. So he was fun. I would like to continue doing some more Yordles. So let me know in the comments what Yordle I should do next. I, I've been doing a couple more polls out there. I see, I believe, um, I believe Vex also did very well in the poll. And then I'm not quite sure who's doing good in the second poll, but we'll also have a third poll out for the Yordle stuff if you want to take a look at that. All right, everybody, that's going to do it. Thanks again for watching. Please leave a thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.